I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for me or my body. Okay, I'm ready. Hello and welcome to Edinburgh TV Festival's brand new podcast series called Say It Loud, I'm what? Black Black <laughs> That's right. Hosted by me, Jackie Adedeji, where I'll be talking with emerging and established UK black creatives who are pioneers in the creative industry and television landscape. Also, warning, this is a black joy zone, so no negative talk here. Only unapologetic black joy. We love to see it. Okay, hello and welcome to Say It Loud. I'm what, Mindy? Black and Brown. <laughs> yes, Edinburgh TV Festival's brand new podcast series hosted by me, Jackie. Now, our first guests are the OGs of UK entertainment. They've given platforms to the likes of BBC Three's Young Philly, Chunks, Harry Pinero, and ZZ Mills. They have been around for 10 years with half a million subscribers on YouTube and over 800,000 followers on Instagram, they have been going from strength to strength with entertainment formats such as Does The Shoe Fit, which has amassed 1 million views in less than 24 hours and has been trending number one on YouTube with each episode. These men do not do things in halves. Winning is their formula. Their names are Jovan, Taff and Parcel and they are the three leading men behind the wall of comedy and we've got them with us today. Yay! 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 I'm, you guys are so busy that we couldn't even get you all in the same place. <laughs> yeah. Like literally. <laughs> Yeah, you, if you've got three heads, then it's better than one, and you want to utilise that and make sure that you're actually putting it to work. So what use would it be if we're all in the same place at the same time, right? True. So, Jovan, like, no biggie, but you're in L.A. right now. I'm in L.A., yes. Okay, the sun is shining. Jealous. It's raining here. It's 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 absolutely raining. And, Purcell, you're, are you at home? Um, I'm in space. <laughs> 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 We're shooting a new series. We're trying to go universal now, you know? Not <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't surprise me. It's you guys, so it wouldn't surprise me. And then I've got lovely Taff with me here. Hi, Taff. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> so <laughs> you've all got the giggles. I love it. This energy, obsessed. Love it. So um, you guys are not just producers. You act, you write, you manage. Um, I want to start with you though, Jovan. So I read that you're one of the 10 Brits to watch. You were nominated. Um, and I have been watching uh, Doom Patrol um, and I saw your character has, you know, some sexy scenes. Um, and I also found out that your mum is a minister. Is this true or false? Very, very, very true. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah, because my dad is a vicar. <laughs> you know them ones. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. So what's your what's your mum saying about the about the scenes? What's she saying? Well, she, 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 she's she's okay with it. Because, like you know, you gotta understand that my I've been a character in which is half robot, half you know what I mean, half man. So when it comes to that whole area of things, it's 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 cybernetic, it's robotic. You know what right. I mean? So um, we don't actually yeah. know whether or not right. he has a thing. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the thing? <laughs> Because I haven't seen no, that, no, I which seen means it. that he hasn't got a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's what you're telling your mum, and then it's totally fine because it hasn't got because he's not got a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But you're so great on it. Like, how did it come about? Thank you, thank you. Um, it came about actually. Uh, well, the first time it came about was uh, in February of 2018. I got an audition for it. Um, followed by another one in, in June, but of which both of them I, I turned down at the time because it was eight wow. months filming and I didn't feel like I was able to leave these lovely men um, all by themselves in London to, to continue with our venture. Um, so I actually turned down the role a couple of times before uh, my movie The Purge came out on 4th of July 2018 and Greg Belanti, the uh, exec producer, saw me in The Purge and said, look, this guy is my cyborg. By the time he went to my team and said, look, I want this guy to play Cyborg, 
he was made aware that I turned it down a couple of times and said, look, let me just try and Skype with him and see if I can send him the project. And I just wanted to Skype because he's such a prolific producer. And on that call, he, he, he talked me around and, and made me realize that this was going to be a great opportunity. And, and yeah, never looked back. And it was. So, yeah, that's how that's how it came about. And here we are. Wow. So you, are you living in L.A. full time? Are you going to come back here? Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely living here full time. I, I, I'm always going to be back in the UK and take long trips and stuff. Um, naturally, my family's there, my brothers, my, my company. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be in the UK loads, you know, once we get out of this whole COVID lockdown situation. Right. But um, in terms of my, my, my residence is, is definitely going to be in L.A. Amazing. We're not jealous at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, and I know that um, Joy, your short film came out, which was also produced by you, um, Purcell, um, which I found found really interesting because, of course, it's looking at like inner city London and how easy it is for young black men to fall victim to the streets. Um, and how was it like making that and putting it together, especially, I suppose, in the wake of BLM this year as well? Yeah, um, I mean, we, we started talking about the project, I think, in 2000 and 2019. And uh, it was actually Taff who was setting up that, that, that project. I remember him saying to me, yo, P, I've got another another short film. You know, here we go. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, let's let's see where we take this. But uh, we worked with a really good charity called Key for Life on that, on that project. And um, yeah, myself and the boys, we just... Um, we felt as though, yeah, you know, we, we've done short films like this in the past, Amani, uh, Shara's story, but we definitely wanted to find a new angle within the process of what, of what happens. And in particular with Joy, it was looking at the mother's perspective. Right. And uh, it was actually taken from my personal experiences growing up. I remember just firsthand watching my auntie go through uh, the, the journey of, you know, having a son who is falling victim to the streets but you know what is that effect on her and I feel like you know we just I think with everything we try to do we, we're always looking at how, how can we do things differently and find new perspectives in the kind of content we're creating and I guess because we pride ourselves in being responsible for uh, the kind of content we're making and, and also responsible for the, for the audience as well and what they're fed you know we, we have to make sure that we get it right so we were thankful to, to work with an exceptional team we had uh, Sheila Notley as a director we had Shaki also as a writer Sam Ewan as a producer so it was a it was a team effort and yeah Olin Kaladi who's an amazing DOP and yeah just team effort to, to bring that one together. The detail was fantastic because um, obviously I'm Nigerian and the church scene is literally like my life going to church like just yeah. everything like just those bits are just so I yeah that was like real I was like yeah I yeah that's my experience is you know being a Nigerian Christian and just that trust yeah, you, <laughs> right. Uh, no, absolutely. absolutely. It, and, and it was that whole thing about, you know, we wanted to capture the joy and, yes. and, and the, the love and the opportunity because I'm, I'm a first generation African. So, mm -hmm. you know, my 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 mum and my auntie and my, my, fa my parents basically came here, but not knowing what what London life is like. And, right. and it's almost that education that they're going through as they start to understand, you know, the cracks, basically. And, you know, um, you know, with any sort of single parent family is it's, it's difficult, it's so difficult because of the circumstances. And so, yeah, we just wanted to, to, to you know, show people, what, you know, it, you can't just pass judgment and blame on a parent for, you know, for their child in, in the kind of choices that they make. And also for young people, I, want, I wanted young people to watch this and go, oh my God, that, that's me, that's my mum. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to start changing my choices in, in order to look after her. Mm -hmm. Which is like yeah it was I think that's what I liked is the fact it's a mother's perspective because we rarely get to see that um and it's always from the person's perspective but not how it affects their family so I thought that was yeah and I thought that was great bang on really really good no really great and then Taff <laughs> oh, <yay. laughs> so Taff you've not done any acting yet I haven't seen you I I'm auditioning are you auditioning yeah you're gonna see a role coming up soon I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Don't put that thing in front of me. <laughs> Don't put that thing in front of me. No, no, no. No, you're no. not acting. You're not going to be making any debuts anytime soon. Nah, any. No, nah. it's not. It's for me, but not for me yet. My next life. Okay, <laughs> but you you manage and run. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. And what's yeah. that like day to day? I manage. It is hectic. I bet. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think. Do you know what? It's um. It's a challenge because mm -hmm. um. Not only are you kind of accountable to make sure that the business runs, you're also accountable to make sure that the entertainment is great, to make sure that everything actually works and it runs the way it should run. 
not just for selfish reasons, but also to satisfy the audience and to keep growing and to keep thinking of new ways of delivering stuff and, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's a good challenge, I should say. Mm. And during COVID, I imagine it's been... <laughs> <laughs> that smile is like, yeah. it's been calm. <laughs> yeah. No, no, to be fair, to be honest, you know what? COVID has had, for me, it's mixed feelings. Um, we've had time to write, we've mm. had time to create, we've had time to come up with new concepts and time to actually plan I feel like the good thing about COVID is everybody stopped. So the moments that we felt like we're behind certain people, whatever, everyone stood still and it was our time to catch up with everything. But the downside is obviously you couldn't you couldn't run at the at the pace that we're right. used to running at, which is ten million miles an hour. But you know, you could you couldn't do that. But then I guess the, what I found with COVID is, in a way, it's a blessing and a curse because it's a bit like a great awakening in a way because 100%. you've had time to stop, reflect, 100%. breathe, be present yeah. in a way that before COVID, I don't think many of us were doing. We didn't have time to be still because we've got a million other things to do, whereas, whereas COVID came and was like, nope. Yeah, it, it makes you also kind of relook at your priorities. Right. Because if you're not, if you can't go to Westfield, <laughs> you know, and... and <laughs> And you can't go to Novikov. It's like, okay, snap, what am I going to do? And then it kind of makes you really think what is important in life and really, really look at your priorities and go, okay, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Here's but me yeah. thinking you were going to say something super profound, like church. <laughs> and then you just went well, and then church as well. And church as well. <laughs> but church is already dedicated on a Sunday. So you already right. know that's your routine. But right, it's, right. it's the, other, the other six days in your week that you, you feel like you don't have enough time to do anything. Right but actually realise that what you don't have time for is what you should have time for. Uh, amen. And it's the only thing now you have time for. Right. So, yeah. Amen. I feel blessed in this place. <laughs> amen. <laughs> so I know, Joven, you've got to go soon. So we know you guys uh, do lots of stuff about awkward questions, especially young Philly going on the streets and asking people mm -hmm. awkward questions. Mm -hmm. But then we were like, hmm... Why don't we ask the guys that run the wall of comedy some awkward questions? All right then. All right. Let's let's get this. Okay. <laughs> Monday we're a team, right? No snitching, nothing like that. The we're a team. The spotlight is on you now, okay? Right. Here we go. If you were stuck on an island, mm -hmm. who would you want as your survival partner out of the other two, Taff? Oh my god. <laughs> she went in there. I, um who would, I, who would I have as my survival partner out of the two <laughs> if I was stuck on an island? Tell you what, though, I wouldn't survive. Why wouldn't you survive? Because you need your you need your left lung needs your right lung. So if I lose one of them, I'm going to suffocate anyway because the other one is my left lung, the other one is my right lung. Wow. Okay. But, but you know what it is? You know what it is? Like, you, you lot can't do what you're trying to do because it don't, don't really work with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this question for the man then because I, I, hey. I just know the answer to this question. The answer to that question is that I would pick Percy, Percy would pick Taff, and Taff would pick me, and then all three of us are on the island together. Okay, that wow. way, we're able to do what we need to. You can't, you can't, you, you know, yo, we invented this. <laughs> <laughs> we invented this. You can't. I'm ever. feeling to be honest because we had no backup to that question whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One nil. Let's go. What's the next one? Okay, here we go. Who is the funniest? The funniest. Um, uh, Who would you say is the funniest? It's a tough it, one, isn't it? it is. Yeah, yeah. We. Yeah. We, 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 uh, all right. You know what it is. All right. There's. We have. We all have different. Different humor. Now we're not gonna. But you guys are. You guys are using your sweet talking, and this is not how it's supposed to go. This no, is not I how it's supposed to. I'll. No, I would actually answer it like point blank if I knew who would uh, who I'd say. Yeah, like for mad. example, like when 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 we we when we was doing Man on the Wall, people used to ask us when D was there. Me and Percy straight away would be like, "Yo, D's, D's the funniest." Straight, because he, he was yeah. funnier than me and Percy. Right. But now, you know what I mean? It's 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 a free way. It's, it's, look, F it. I'll take the crown. I'll take the crown. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Percy, so Percy, Percy's, Percy's the funniest. Percy yeah, Percy's it. the funniest. Percy's the funniest. Okay. Yeah. Percy's okay, the funniest. fine. Percy takes it. All right. Who's the most argumentative? Javan. I'm not gonna hesitate. I ain't even gonna hesitate. That was you saying both. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, come on. Like we, we're gonna be honest as well. J Jay. J. <laughs> He's got his Jay. hand up. See, see, to the oh. point that even if I wanted to say me, you won't let me. Look. Wow. 100%. Look. Yeah. You can't take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't taking your shine, bro. Take that one. That one is yours. That one is hundred percent yours. <laughs> okay. Who is the best at making important decisions? Like who's the most decisive? 
The most decisive. Is that a JOT? JOT. Is that a Giovanna Taff? Oh, you're so kind to each other. What would you say, Jay? Um, I think, I think, I think overall, like, so me and Tab, we're very similar in that sense of the, we're both Leo, right? And we're right. both, you know, fire yeah. sign, get to the point of, yeah. Tap, 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 Tap is definitely more, the most, um, Tap is definitely more structural. And also when it comes to numbers and it comes to, you know, the, the, the kind of the black and white sort strategy. Of thing, Right, um, strategy, yeah. yeah. Then, then, then Tav is there. Um, I would say for me, the, the overall and the bigger picture and the kind of the long term, what is this going to be? You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say for myself. So yeah. it's kind of a it's kind of a, a double edged sword. And it, it in depends way, on yeah. what we're trying to what we're trying to make a decision on. Uh, give us give us an example what decision. Give you them a situation. Yeah, yeah, give them a situation. And then it will tell you who would make that decision the quickest. Oh my gosh! Are you putting me on the spot? Yeah, come on. you doing that to us? You think free? <laughs> you think free of us? We just sit here and watch you slap us up? No way! Come on, do it. <laughs> I can't. Well, can we move on to the next question? All right, all right. Thanks, we can, guys. All right, all right. We'll let you. We can, we can come back to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is your most embarrassing celebrity encounter? Oh, uh, I'd say embarrassing, embarrassing. Uh, where we uh, where we've been embarrassed. Uh, it's not. We're not name dropping here, by the way. This is not. <laughs> <happening>. <laughs> no, but no. What, what it was is that we saw Will on the carpet for what film was it, Jay? Um, it was for um, um, Focus, 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 Focus with Margot yeah, Robbie. And um, right. we saw him, and was I just lost the plot. I absolutely lost my mind, and <laughs> I just was screaming, "Will, Will, Will!" And every and there was a thousand people around him screaming Will Smith as well at the same time. His face was like he was trembling. And then wow. I, I, we, got, we got to shake his hand and I, I couldn't even get the, the, bro, I didn't know what I was saying. I was just, I was just saying stuff. Energy was <laughs> coming out my mouth. You know, when yeah, you, was, you know, you know, when you, you know, when you have that moment where cool. you're like, you know, like, oh, when I meet Will for the first time, I'm going to say this. Like, right. none of that happened. That, that no, was, I went out the window. I was, I was, I was, I was, but he's such a legend that like, we all grew up watching him, like, and his charisma, his energy is just yeah, yeah, unmatched. Yeah, it's mad, unmatched. What about you, Taff? Ah, uh, see, I don't really get invited to fancy stuff like this where no, I meet celebrities what? and really? stuff. Really? Why? I'm, I'm trying to liar. <laughs> I'm trying... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying... no, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think who have I met and I've actually. Oh, I remember actually. I remember. I remember actually. I think the most embarrassing moment for me was um, I was still at game at the time, and then I'd managed to. Um, to sort out like an album listening party for Chip. I'm a huge Chipmunk fan. Right, right, huge right. Fan. Yeah, love Chip. Huge, huge, Chip huge fan. fan. Any track he would spit the lyrics. Back to back. I'm okay, a huge. Okay, what about Chip. his latest? Daily Dis- Dappy. No, Daily Dappy. Stormzy. Oh yeah, which one? Flowers or wow. Kill MC? The which one, one do you the want? The one that was at the Shell Garage. Oh yeah, yeah that's flowers. Go that's go flowers. Go no, 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 not yet. They're not ready for that. Chip, Chip we have him for royalties. No, he doesn't no, mess about. There was no response though, but. Yeah. Um. So I think at that moment we'd already I'd already arranged everything and then. And then he arrived, right, to get to, to this album listening party. And I think I was I was with Jay at the time, which helped me because, you know, I got a bit of status and stood next to Javan that way. <laughs> but I remember, I remember going to Chip, right, and the first question I asked him, why I asked him this, I don't know, was, have you eaten? <laughs> who, who does that? <laughs> like, who actually asked somebody, have you eaten? And they just arrived to their that's, album. That's, that's, that's caring. That's yeah, that's no, but, that's but, but he... Asked me if I eaten. But he he was looking at me like. Ask me have you eaten today, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember him looking at me like, "Who even are you to ask me about foods?" <laughs> Should I, I mean? So it was just yeah, that was that. Was. And then after I said, I was like, "I meant to say, how are you doing today? Right. Not not have you eaten?" But yeah, here you go. But I feel like that was coming from a caring genuine. Like you were just. Interested. That's embarrassing. Don't no. don't make me feel good. Yeah, I mean, that was I embarrassing. Mean, it is a bit, but it's fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, there could have been worse things that you could have said. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, this is my favorite question. Mm-hmm. My wife and kids or Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Fresh Prince. It is, that, it's very difficult, you know, because it is, it's like, like. Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Yeah, I think. Don't stop it. Do you, you know why it's difficult? Because Fresh I. Prince. I, I do, yeah, yes, but wait, but wait. Because, you know, <laughs> yo, if anyone is Will Smith, it's me. But my wife and kids. My wife and kids was like, I don't remember watching an episode. I, there were a couple of episodes of Fresh Prince that I feel like I watched and I was like, 
oh, that was a cool episode. But then with my having kids, I feel like every single episode I was, I was okay, invested. okay. But but the scene, all I'm gonna say is fourteen. Yeah, so yeah, say yeah, it, yeah, say it, bro. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> fourteen. I had fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be refreshments overall, but I, I do of see course. why that that conversation is there because my wife and kids was a phenomenal show. Oh that my was god, incredible. Junior it was, was like, show. yeah. I yeah. remember when he did Mary Mary, quite contrary. Quite quite contrary. contrary. <laughs> <laughs> Now that is actually Open a tough question, but yeah, it's... I'm so confused. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's funnier, Chunks or Harry Panero? Ooh, ooh. See, One, I f- Harry. I it, think. Okay, it depends on the show. It depends yeah, on the there show. you go. Harry, that's that's HP's, exactly what I was gonna say. HP's HP's punchlines are out of this world. Mm-hmm. But you These see, chunks are crazy. But Chunk's, Chunk's yeah. subtle humor is incredible. Right. Like the way he's so smooth with it mm-hmm. and he'll just look at the camera and he'll make you laugh. And he doesn't say the single word. I'd, I'd right. say Chunk's. I'd say Chunk's. The reason yeah, I say I Chunk's think, is because you think... can, I think you can put him in anything and yeah. Chunk's will always deliver. Like right. every yeah. show. I think Chunk's is funny overall. Like yeah. he's overall, yeah. but, but, but like Harry is a special. That's the shoe fit. Still. That's the shoe fit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the shoe fit. You can't touch HP like the sauce. <laughs> I love that. Um, E4 or BBC3? Right now? Ooh. Political. <laughs> <laughs> we so shy. Right. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let, me, let me cover this one. Let me cover this one. Let me cover this one. Um, I love the shows on BBC3 mm-hmm. and I like the relationship we with E4. Yeah, I, I would say the one that I prefer the most is whatever one commissions our show first. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good answer. Good answer. Okay, this this segment is where we um, look at like a moment in your life and in your career. So you guys went from Mandem on the Wall, um, and then you went for, went to Young Eiffel's Youngers, and then Shiro Story, and then now you own a massive production company. It's no secret that the TV industry is struggling to engage younger viewers. And you guys are out here with platforms that span over 3.5 billion views. Um, you even have a football team, right? Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, we, we do. We do. Like, we do. You guys are not mucking about. Small, small. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what advice would you give to TV producers on how they can engage young people? Because you guys have... Take a risk. You're killing it. Just take a risk. Um, there's the same risks that were taken on certain shows that were deemed controversial five years ago is the same risk or 10 years ago is the same risk that I feel like we deserve because mm. you've got to understand something it's like you've got a platform like YouTube for example which has billions and billions of hours of content that get uploaded mm-hmm. and then we have a show that will get a million views in, to- in less than 12 hours the audience are there you know audience will always follow the content and before YouTube they were watching it somewhere else and even if you look at Facebook our Facebook page used to do 4 billion views so when you look at that, it's just just take a risk and just trust us. That's what I'd say. So there was no blueprint for you guys. So you guys are three black guys. You're getting into this TV and online thing and you're doing it. What were moments, would you say, that massively impacted your career? Wow, no. that's a good question. Oh, oh. There's so many. There's, there's so think, many moments that... We've we've had we've had made we've had loads of setbacks. I right. think those were always good for me. There's the setbacks are going to be the most definitive things, you know, outside of the success that people can see. Sure. I think yeah. um, that the setbacks allowed us to then, uh, for us anyway, we we always decided to, you know, take that that setback on and see the different perspective the perspective to it and just re strategize and find an, find another way in. You know, we always said that if we can't go through the house. Go for the door, then let's go for the window. If we can't go for wow. the window, down the chimney. There was always, there's always a way to make something happen. And DIY, I think we've always said, yo, if we can't, something's not working and it's just like there's friction, then cool, we'll just do it ourselves. And I feel like Shire's story to everything we've created, like does shoot, like all of these concepts and stuff, like we've proven, you know, that we, we know what we're doing and, and, you know, these things work. So I feel like, yeah, I would say the setbacks have definitely been a major factor to that. What would you say, boys? Yeah, I agree. I think 
the setbacks is what essentially set us up for, I feel like all of the greatest things that we've created came from a struggle, came from us trying to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. from, from the first time, which was man on the wall and feeling like we weren't getting enough opportunities and needed to do something about that and create our own opportunities. And then in turn, creating man on the wall, which then leads to youngers. Like that was solving a problem. Wall of comedy getting to the point where we want to create more, where we're being told no by these different platforms, by Channel 4, BBCs, et cetera. And then, saying to ourselves that we're going to have to uh, create and prove to ourselves and prove to them that our content does work and that we do have an audience for it. And so we create the wall of comedy off the back of that as a platform to hone that content. Again, that came from a problem and creating a solution for that. Mm -hmm. So everything in which someone else could have looked at and been like, oh, this is something in which is negative. Let me give up or let me stop or a reason to no longer continue. Because of our perspective, it was always, okay, cool. Well, if this is not working, what is going to work? Or how can we make it work? Or what can we do within our power to make that happen? And then, it, you know, doing that then creates these moments or creates the biggest opportunities that we've, that we've had to date, you know? So mm -hmm. definitely, you know, piggybacking off what Percy's saying in terms of those setbacks and, and the problems um, that we've had have essentially actually been our biggest blessings. Wow. And I imagine... Did you have any moments where, you know, you were being rejected and you thought, oh, should we just pack this all in? Or did you always feel like, let's just keep going, guys. Let's just keep moving. No, well, you, you go yeah, through that. I mean, you go through yeah. that. Like, oh, like, all right, bun this. This is long. Like, let's forget. <laughs> we uh -huh. always end up at the place where, no, nah, guys, we can't. we got to keep going. Right. But naturally, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, the human, the human side of you, the instinct says, ah, oh, this, is, this is long, man. I should just stop doing this. And then the legacy and the purpose says, well, you can't. So... Because mm. you can't, what, what are you going to do in order to make it right? Right. I, also I think, think, it I think that, that's, yeah. Go T, oh. sorry T. Yeah, I think it also helps having two other people next to you because you're also accountable. Like, I can't let these other guys down. And then on the days that I feel like, you know what, I've knocked and knocked and my freaking fingers are now sore from knocking on his door. Giovanna says, oh, let me just kick it. Let's see what happens. Wow. And then, then you follow that kick and then, then that kick doesn't work. Then person comes and goes, you know what, I'm going to head it in. And then, do you know what I mean? So it's always good to have a, a good support system around you. So when you have that, those low moments, you can look next to you and go, you know what? Let's keep doing this. Mm -hmm. This can work one day. Yeah, I, I was just going to say friendship. Like, you know, wow. like, for me, it's the bottom line because I feel like the, the way that we work together, the three of us, is just so in sync. And mm. yeah, there are, there are those moments that you spoke about. But if I feel that moment, I know that Jovan and Tap are going to pick me up and, and mm. you know, and mm. remind me of what the vision is and we keep going and i yeah. remember a situation we was in america having to like brainstorm at a certain company and um <laughs> I, <lost laughs> <my life. laughs> I went into a meltdown because i was stressed i was panicking how the hell are we going to pitch this show and it was just literally everything was just off the cuff and we had this opportunity this amazing opportunity and um yeah i think <laughs> tap and javan you know slapped some sense into me sat me down and was like look we, you know we got this like it's fine mm, and mm. I, tr I just trusted them and i feel like yeah that 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 was like a definitive moment you know for me to remind myself of like yeah i'm working next to some you know two great great people so yeah that really yeah. helps you see to, to, to go alongside that i remember there was a moment that me and Pass were going to this meeting mm -hmm. and then you know we, we had to get to this meeting right we had to get to this meeting it was it was a potential investor at the time and we were, we were holding on for dear life and our uber crashed right imagine um. that it was 4.20, so you can imagine how Hyde, how, right, right. how rammed Hyde Park was. Right. We couldn't get a black cab, right? And Percy starts running, right? I never told him this, right? I'm, I'm now thinking, do you know what? It's a sign from God. We're not meant to go to this right. meeting. There's no taxis <laughs> around us. Our Uber just crashed. And I'm just seeing this boy go. Whoo, whoo, whoo. Wow. And I'm like, I, I, I'm like, do you know what? I have to keep running. Wow. We ran all the way to that meeting. No and then I remember idea. getting there. Doing Sweet. this to that. Where so, was the meeting? Uh, it's, 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 it was actually Ken. It was actually Ken. It was actually Ken. We ran from Hyde Park to actually, to actually Ken. Ken. Yeah. My lungs were burning. There was no time to jump on like a Where? forest bike. Or... Where? There was no time. We were already, <laughs> we were already late as it was. <laughs> there was no there was no time wow. my lungs were burning and all I can see is Percy keep going <laughs> and I, in my head I'm thinking I could stop right and I'm thinking but the banter I'm gonna get for not being fit enough to get to this right. office is insane so I kept going I had to tag along I had to go wow. that's real like that's real hustler yeah shit, you know yeah. Like, you're not you're not gonna let stuff stop you're like no let's we'll, we'll work around it yeah. and, no. and, and also I've got this six pack as well. So I was like, I can do <laughs> <laughs> Just had to drop 
that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If I, that I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all I have is a pair of glasses that allows me to see. So yeah, let's let's keep going. Let's keep let's keep moving on on that one. <laughs> and did you did you guys have any like? massive people in the industry who influenced you so for example a massive influence for me has always been Lenny Henry mm-hmm. um, especially when he had his Lenny Henry show like that was iconic even Richard Blackwood having his Richard Blackwood show mm-hmm. that was massive you know to have two black men with their own shows like mm-hmm. who do you think has had like a massive influence on your career who do you look up to you see, you see and think that's who I'm that's who I'm trying to be um it's, it's it's difficult. I mean, we got there's loads of people because when we first started Mandem, we you know there was people like Shadrack and the Mandem, oh, yes, Jazzy, A Squeezy. There were so oh, many of those guys that were mm-hmm. creating, you know, and you know, and that kills me. That kills me that they're not on right now primetime TV and they right. don't have these opportunities to be even helping to nurture new talent. Like those guys did it when YouTube <laughs> wasn't as big as it is now, and right. we had no scene whatsoever. So. You know, and, and I think that's why we did Wall of Comedy because it's like we don't want more potential to slip through, the, through you know, flip, sit through the cracks and mm-hmm. and not have you know this this type of resource and support. But I think um, for me, yeah, growing up, I guess with comedy, uh, Lenny was a big part of our journey. Javan did mm-hmm. Rudy's Red Records at Hackney Empire with Lenny, and I feel like me and him was like, oh, that was like a, a chapter and a, and a nice checkpoint. Um, but I, th- I think you know we always looked at our Americans as the American cousins as cro- as well in terms of what they did. Mm-hmm. infrastructures have how they built stuff the, you know the wayne brothers in america mm-hmm. um and then even kevin hart kevin hart is a massive inspiration kevin mm-hmm. i think for myself and Giovanna's actors kevin's got a production company and he's also got a platform and he's also mm-hmm. so there isn't a box kevin just goes oh this is my box and that's right. it and i feel like in the uk we we do that and, and it's so frustrating so i think yeah i'd say for me personally Ke- kevin is probably like yeah businessman kevin you know mm. what about you joven would you say yeah, I, I echo Percy. Um, I think that there were, uh, you know, growing up, my biggest inspiration was Will Smith, like from, as an actor. Um, but in terms of like in the UK, I think everyone that you see doing things and the closer that you get to these people that are doing things that you are aspiring to do, you know, mm-hmm. Lenny Henry was a big one. When I, when I worked with Lenny, it was like, it was, that felt like a real massive milestone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the same with uh, even looking at like Idris Elba as being one of the prolific black actors in which especially being able to go to the other side of the pond and, and do it in the US, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, these guys are, are, were, you know, big inspirations. And outside of that, there was a lot of inspiration in which I, I feel, especially in the early days, we took from even the music industry and looking at a lot yeah. of the artists because back then there was no real way there was there wasn't there wasn't any other people that we could look at the blueprint of as comedians or people that were building you know online platforms for right. comedy and blah 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 so yeah a big thing was like okay well what did, what did the music scene do or how how did the music scene operate and we even got a lot of love from the music scene before anyone else it wiley was one of the first people to reach out to us yeah. like yo wow. love what you're doing it was you know what i mean um, and a lot of these rappers and Jamal Edwards and mm-hmm. I still like I have like a whole what's it called all the tweets that we screenshotted from the start from all these oh, people that were backing us and lovely. it was it was heavily in the music scene um, so yeah that was a big inspiration um, as we started to build and develop and the wall of comedy was even a, a big part of okay look at Link Up TV SBTV GRM mm-hmm. and you've got these music platforms we're inspired by that but where's the comedy platform there isn't one let's make one you right. know so um, yeah there was a lot of uh, uh, in- inspirations across the board really. That's really interesting because what came to mind was Deaf Comedy Jam and how they were the platform in America for a lot of the comedians that we see today. And in a way, I feel like what you're doing on Wall of Comedy isn't too different. It's just in an online space because you are breeding the next like generation of like comedians in this country. And I think that's something that we were definitely missing here. And I suppose if Wall of Comedy was around back in the day where, you know, when Jazzy and Shadrach and the Mango were around, Shadrach and Mandem were around, then it might it might have been different, but there was no there was no space for them at that time. M- Mo, the comedian, was always funny. Right. He's been gigging for 10 years. You right. know what I mean? We know that because we used to go to Sunday show and watch these guys, you know, yeah. and it, it's because of Instagram and where he grew his, his audience to where right. now the, the people have gone, yep, this guy needs to be on TV. So mm-hmm. this, the same thing's happening to Munich Chihuahua. Same thing happened to to Michael Dapper. So, you know, we, we, that's why we have to utilize social media in the way that mm-hmm. we're doing. Is because it's the only way sometimes to prove to these people that 
you know, th this stuff, we're good. Like, you know, our things, you know, are, do, are worth commissioning. But of course, you know, on paper, that doesn't, you know, they can't relate to that. So of course, you know, they, they don't, they don't buy into it from the early days. Mm -hmm. Right. Do, and is it, is, is it, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of TV companies are probably trying to emulate what you guys are doing because they see that you're getting, you have a massive fan base. Um, um, and you have like really massive entertainment led formats, which work so much better online than they would on TV, mainly because I perhaps censorship in TV, there's a lot of censorship mm, and online mm, you can kind 100%. of be free. And so I suppose that's a massive advantage that you guys have as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I think like, the understanding that now, like online and TV, is, it's just media, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think like that one of the big pennies dropped for me when, um, when uh, a lot when COVID hit and a lot of these right. films that are now on streaming platforms, what, which one was it on Disney Plus? Um, uh, no. uh, was it Mulan or, or one of them on Disney Plus Mulan. that they just released? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they had to, uh, they did it on Disney Plus streaming and you ended up just paying like paying an extra $10 to get a ticket for it. Right. Wonder Woman is being released on HBO Max on the, on the same day that it's been released in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Like it's been released to, to, as an opportunity to stream. So at that point, what's the difference between that film or that, that movie in which is just a TV or a cable movie? There isn't really any difference because it is based on the platform. So nice. when you used to look at things online and people are like, ah, it's just an online show. Okay, well, is Wonder Woman now just an online movie? Like, no, of course not. But <laughs> now this perspective has allowed us to think and look very differently about the, the state of play that we're in and, mm -hmm. and also have this content appreciated in the, in the mm -hmm. way that I felt like online content wasn't appreciated before streaming was as big as it is. Thank you. Do you know what? I'm, you guys are dropping gems. I feel like I should have brought my notepad. Like, <laughs> should have got my notepad and been like, um, so we're coming to the end of the podcast and this podcast primarily is about celebrating black brothers like yourself who have gone clear, um, especially in a very white dominated industry. And I wanted this podcast to be centered around black joy. And when I think about blackness, I think joy, I think being organized to do the candy dance, I think strength, I think, <laughs> <laughs> you know the <laughs> The candy dance. You know the candy you know, dance. Oh. You know, there's facts in that, you know. There's actually <laughs> huge facts in that. I actually agree with you. I actually like, agree with we, you. We just get into formation, just... <laughs> do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter yeah. where you are, you just go running. Yeah. Um, but I also think strength and I think survival. And so I wanted to ask you, uh, gents, what does black joy mean to you? Ooh, for me, what comes to mind is persistence, mm -hmm. perseverance, hope and faith. Mm. I feel like... Um, just reflecting on our journey. I mean, this has been good because we don't really do this to ourselves. We don't really kind of sit down and go, guys, what? Let's actually have a look at what we've done because we're always on the go. Right. And for me, just hearing it, I was like, Is that us? all right, then. <laughs> chill out, man. Then. All right. All right. We've been doing all right. We've been doing all right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So that for me is what really comes to mind because it's reflection of the journey that we've been through together mm -hmm. and personally in our own personal lives as well. Yeah. That's kind of been that those things kind of then lead you to that moment of joy. Right. And I feel like the moment of joy is a moment of celebration mm -hmm. and also a moment of reflection at the same time. Right. So yeah, that that's what comes to mind. Love that. Stop it. <laughs> She's flirting with me guys. Stop it. Stop it. It's a bit of, it's a bit of eye sex. <laughs> I would say uh, for me, uh, black joy represents um, love. I think it rep represents love, but it also represents to me like laughter, love and community. Like mm. it doesn't matter if you're Caribbean culture, African culture, you know, we can all shout to everyone's yard and there'll be a plate of food offered to you, <laughs> there'll be, you know, water. Right. And there'll be music and there'll mm -hmm. be conversation and it'll be just like, it's just beautiful, beauty, you know, like mm. beauty. And I feel like you're, you're never alone. You're always mm. together. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what Black Joy feels for me. Mm. Love that. I just feel like eating jello for us now, but <laughs> then you said that. Rice and peas with J Rice. <laughs> Ooh, Black Joy for me would be um that's a very that's a very good question. I, I don't mm -hmm. actually know what the answer is to this question. But when I think black joy, what comes to mind? What comes to mind for me is seeing black people joyous and mm. what 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 happens in, 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 in I feel in order to really cultivate and get to the point of black joy. Um, outside of, you know, what we currently have, 
Mm. For me, I say ownership. Mm. I, I, I feel so strongly that when we own as a community mm -hmm. so much more or, in, or, in, or are in the positions of ownership, at that point, will we have opportunity? And mm. opportunity is one of the biggest things that I feel like as black people we've been fighting for or fighting mm -hmm. for the right to have. Right. And ownership for me is what gives us that opportunity mm -hmm. to have and facilitate black joy be because when we yeah. own yeah freedom yeah and when mm. we own we are we are free we are mm. we have the opportunity to be and to you know dictate for ourselves and not constantly be uh dictated to which i mm. feel like we we are and we have been and and you know black lives matter like this is this is this whole movement and everything that has been created is because we are not in the positions that we that we rightly deserve to be in power mm. and power again ownership so yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm answering this question. But when I think black joy, I just think I would I would have so much joy, and we would have so much joy as uh, as a nation if we just owned. Wow! Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> thank you, Joe man. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Say it loud. That's right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. I don't know you got to go, but thank you. This was so, it was lovely to meet you on. Honestly, like I'm just, it's so inspirational. It's so amazing. And like, I can't wait to see it get bigger. Um, Yeah, I love it. Thank and you Likewise, guys. man. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Yes, and keep that. doing this. This is phenomenal.